So in all honesty, I don't know if this shape even has a name, but the consensus on Twitter when I asked some people was that it's like a top-down view of a diamond or a gemstone, something like that. But regardless of what it's called, I'm going to show you how to create it in Adobe Illustrator. So yeah, no idea what it's called, if it even has a specific name, but regardless, I'm gonna show you how you can unpick this complex shape, break it down step by step, and how we can then recreate this in Adobe Illustrator. And it's not as hard as you might think, but if you do like a challenge, hey, you go ahead, pause the video now, and have a go at creating it. If you want to learn how to do it step by step, then we're gonna jump into it right now and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe Illustrator, and as always, we have an artboard that is a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And I'm gonna start by going over to the rectangle tool, left clicking and holding, and selecting the ellipse tool. And we'll click and drag. We're gonna hold shift, so we get a perfect circle. And we'll make this nice and big, and position that in the center. Now I'm gonna go back to that same tool, click and hold, switch over to the rectangle tool, click and hold shift, so we get a lovely little square. And I'm gonna hover over one of the corners, and when I see the rotate icon, I'm gonna rotate this and hold shift to snap that to that 45 degree increment. And if I drag over both of these, from either the align panel or the property inspector on the right, I can just make sure that the square or the diamond sits centrally inside the circle. Next, I'm gonna grab the pen tool over here and just go up to view and make sure that I have snap to point turned on and snap to pixel turned off. If it tries to snap to the pixel and the point, it can cause all kinds of chaos. Just trust me on that one. So we're gonna zoom in, get the pen tool, click, and then hold shift and go all the way up. Now it wants to continue this. You can press escape to cancel that or go to select, deselect, nifty little shortcut there, command or control plus shift and A. So I'm just gonna do this here, click, hold shift, and then either escape, or that nifty little shortcut to deselect. There we go, fantastic. Now what I'm gonna do is drag over everything and hold shift and then click on the circle to deselect it from that selection. So you can see now I just have those four lines and the diamond square thing in the middle selected. And I'm gonna go up to edit copy and then we'll go paste in front hover over the corner rotate and hold shift again we're going to snap it to that 45 degree increment and just make sure everything is selected and well we're going to set the fill color to none we'll select the stroke and i think we'll bump this up over here from the stroke panel we'll go for 10 maybe maybe 20 Oh no, a bit too chunky. We'll go for 14, there we go, 14, looks good to me. Okay, so for this next bit, we're gonna press Command or Control Y. This allows us to go into essentially a wireframe mode without any styling. We're gonna zoom in nice and close. Again, we'll grab that pen tool and we're gonna click on this point here. You can see it marks the point where the lines intersect. That's those smart guides being very, very helpful. So we'll click and we'll go over to this point on the other side. Click, discontinue that curve with escape. And there we go, we have a line. Now what I can do is I can select this and I can hold shift and it will scale up. However, it will only scale from one side. If I hold down alt or option as well, it will scale from the center. Let's just undo that and start again. Just so it scales equally, we're gonna go all the way to the edge. We'll just go just beyond the border of the edge and zoom in. And then if I select the direct selection tool, that's A on the keyboard, what we can do is just deselect, click on this. And then if I drag this single anchor point, I can actually move it. You can see it's snapping to that line, which is very helpful because I can then snap this exactly to the edge and do the same on the other side. So zoom in thousands of percent if you have to grab that direct selection tool make sure it just follows that line boom snaps there we go so now i've got that line that is pretty bang on i can select this and then use that copy and paste technique again copy 
and paste in front or paste in place, either of those work. And these are definitely shortcuts that are worth learning. So I've pasted one in place. And then what I can do is go over here to the transform panel in the property inspector, and I can flip this along the horizontal axes and then drag this holding shift back and you'll see it snaps to the center. And you can zoom in to these different points and just check that it definitely goes through those same intersecting points, but it looks good to me. And now we can select both of these holding shift and we'll do the old copy and paste in place shortcut. Or rotate, holding shift. And there we go. We end up with something that looks like this. And if you've done it correctly, you can zoom in and you can see all of these points intersect perfectly. Thank goodness that I did it correct. And we get something that looks like this. And we're nearly done now, actually. So we're just going to zoom in, grab the pen tool for the last part. And I find it's easier to do this in wireframe mode because you don't have any kind of strokes or stroke weights. And we're just going to click and click. And see, it doesn't continue the curve here. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but just get in the habit of using that nifty little shortcut up here to deselect. So we'll pen tool, click, click, deselect shortcut, click, click, deselect shortcut. So I'm just using that pen tool, deselect, click, click, deselect. So every time I draw a line, I use the deselect shortcut afterwards. Otherwise, sometimes it will try and continue that on or it will merge it with an existing path. And then you end up with these paths that it just causes all kinds of chaos, trust me. So there we go, we've gone round and it looks like that, which isn't ideal. So what we can do is we can select this, go back over to the stroke panel here and then what I can do is I can change the corner to bevel join. And you can see it hides that there. There's a few other options that you can use. And I can actually go in and I could maybe bring the stroke down a little bit. So we could go for 10 points instead. Just make it a little bit thinner. And you could leave it here if you wanted. But the only thing left to do is just remove this inner section here with all these lines. So I can just drag over everything. Go over to the toolbar on the left, grab the Shape Builder tool. Love this tool. And we're going to hold down Alt or Option so we get the minus appear. Click and drag. Woo! Boom. Gone. Center removed. And if you do get any little weird artifacts or anchor points left over, you can see with the Direct Selection tool here. Just select them, hit Delete or Backspace, and then you're good to go. And there we go. Complex shape. Deconstructed. Recreated. And there you go, we're done. And there we go, so that wraps up the video on how to create a diamond gemstone kind of shape. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.